continuing with our coverage of uh, forces, power, energy, etc., we're going to be looking now at uh, potential energy and its relationship to force, as well as uh, a useful tool for illustrating their relationship, what are known as energy diagrams. So to find this relationship between potential energy and force, we first have to uh, look at our known equations for force and work slash energy. So we start off with, uh, in one dimension, uh, work is force times distance. That's simple enough. But we also know that for conservative forces, work, work is the opposite of the change in uh, potential energy. Or if we make those you know, sufficiently small, we get that a small change in work is the opposite of a small change in potential energy. Now we can then substitute in uh, this potential energy for work in our current equation to derive a relationship between these two quantities. So substituting in this negative du for work in our original equation, we get that negative du equals force times dx. And separating our variables, bringing down this dx, we get that force is the opposite of the derivative of the change in potential energy. So this means that force is essentially the derivative, or the opposite of the derivative rather, of a uh, potential energy function, or can also be interpreted as the slope. So if we look at uh, a graph of potential energy versus position, and this is what is known as an energy diagram, basically where you graph u of x over x, uh, we can break this down into, at any given point, let's say right here, it has a slope uh, along this way, and we know that the force is currently pulling it downwards because uh, it's increasing the energy. Right here, you can see it has a lower total; it has a lower potential energy. Therefore, the force must be putting energy into the uh, object. At this point, therefore, we can see that the uh, force is acting this way which uh, corresponds to uh, the opposite of the slope of the u of x function at that point. And we can also break this down into really two separate opponent components. So right here you have uh, the total mechanical energy of the system, that is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And that splits up into the kinetic energy right here because that's how much uh, potential energy it has lost from the total and the uh, total potential energy right here, because it is, after all, a graph of potential energy. So any y value will give you its potential energy. And what you have to realize is that this object can sort of oscillate back and forth in this trough, but it will never go higher than these points right here, basically where the potential energy function intercepts the mechanical energy line, because uh, you can never increase the uh, mechanical energy without an outside force. Lastly, we're going to be looking more in depth at energy diagrams and especially their special cases. So here we have a kind of strange energy diagram. This could maybe be for you know a roller coaster that goes at varying heights or what have you. That's the analogy I like to imagine just because it's simple to visualize uh, how much the roller coaster is moving versus uh, potential energy as a function of its position. But anyhow, we have four points marked. You have A, B, C, and D. And these points are all special because they're what are known as equilibria, which is basically where the force acting on it is zero, which means that uh, the change in potential energy acting on it is also zero. In other words, the slope at these points is flat. So there's no uh, force accelerating it in either direction. So these are known as equilibria. But there's many types of equilibria. There's First of all, there's stable equilibria, which you could guess uh, would be uh, relative to stay in their own place. So, for example, A is a stable equilibrium, because if you were to nudge it slightly this way, it would just sort of oscillate back and forth in this trough. Oppositely, if you have unstable equilibria, like, let's say, B, B is unstable, because if you were to nudge it slightly to the left or right, it would uh, fall down the left slope or fall down the right slope uh, and never really well, would oscillate and return eventually to the point B, but it would never uh, 
come back completely to that point B. Oppositely, even further, there are uh, what are known as neutral equilibria, and that is what C is. So C, basically if you were to nudge it left or right, would roll at a constant velocity because it's on a point where uh, the slope is zero and therefore the force is zero. D is another example of an unstable equilibrium. So D is unstable because if you were to nudge it this way, it would go slightly up this hill, depending on how much you nudged it, and then come back down until it reached uh, this trough that C is currently caught in. And the same thing goes for if it were nudged to the left. So that concludes our coverage of energy or derivations of equations and what have you, as well as our uh, notes on energy diagrams. But because it's the last sort of instructional video in the section, we're going to have a practice problem video after this. Uh, I want to go over sort of an equation summary to get you thinking what tools are at your disposal when you're approached with energy problems. So what you have to realize is that if something is conservative, that the mechanical energy at the beginning is going to be the same at the end or you can break that into its constituent parts you know ke1 plus u1 equals ke2 plus u2 and then the kinetic energy itself is defined by the equation mv squared over 2 there's various kinds of potential energy the first of which we looked at was uh, spring potential energy so kx squared there's also gravitational energy, mgh, and the forces that act on this. Remember that forces are the opposite of the change in potential energy. The force for a spring, f spring, is kx, or negative kx, and then uh, the force of uh, gravity is once again mg. Lastly, as a sort of wrapping up note. Remember, we didn't cover it too uh, much, but power is basically just work per unit time or energy output per unit time, depending on your perspective. And that about wraps it up in terms of our uh, general equations for this whole section. So in the next video, we're going to be doing uh, practice problems with gravity and spring energy, as well as looking at some energy diagrams for practice.